let's try to briefly cover connectedness. This is already available in, on uh, YouTube, my lectures, if you want them, I'm sure others are available as well. And compactness, very important concept, will we'll haunt you if you don't learn compactness. So make sure you watch the lectures, because I'll have little time. Only two lectures left, I have little time to explain what compactness is, if at all. But videos are available, one 30 minutes long, one a bit longer. So connectedness, as we mentioned before, here are the pictures we have in mind. So we have our metric space, and the metric space is an urn. That's the whole metric space. And then I might choose to, uh, to write it as a disjoint union of two sets. One of them here is the set A, and the other is the set B. Yes? And the point of this uh, cracked urn is to, you notice that, you notice that A union B is the entire space. So the pieces end up being the full space. And of course the pieces are disjoint. And you might also add that A is not empty, B is not empty. Yes? So this is not a disconnection. Intuitively speaking, the urn is glued together, it's intact. So this looks connected. But if you go in this museum and you look at another exhibit, and in this case the exhibit, let's say, we have this piece, we have this shard of the urn sticking out, and we have this piece. So this is, well, you, you might say it's, it's, it's another space M. But what happens in here, so you might say that uh, this part is A, and everything else is B. So B is this part, together with this part, that's our B. In this case, we also have that the union of A and B, of those two sets, it makes up the full space, and yet you would, you would intuitively say that in this case, the space is disconnected. And we try to come up with uh, a definition that suitably captures this concept. And one person remarked already how that might be accomplished. And perhaps you remember that remark. What makes it disconnected is, as you see, there is intuitively space between the disjoint pieces. So how do we describe space? We say, well, here is one part of this uh, uh, space I can cover in bubble wrap, what do you call it, bubble wrap paper? I'm not sure if you call it paper. Just bubble wrap, right? So you take bubble wrap and you cover this piece in a bubble wrap, and then you can cover the other piece in a disjoint bubble wrap and call it B. Now what is our bubble wrap? The bubble wrap is our protective space, protective set. Protective set means, means what? Means that they are open sets. So we would say that, uh, that we can say that U union B, it contains uh, the space M. It could be that they are part of M, it doesn't uh, matter. Right now I'm, I'm kind of viewing this as... Uh, as uh, so what, what do we know about those sets? We have that U intersection M is not empty. V intersection M is also not empty. So the bubble wrap contains... Each piece of the bubble wrap, each separate segment of the bubble wrap contains part of the space. V intersection M not empty, and uh, and what else? But on the other hand, U intersection V is empty. 
And here we, of course, uh, make the note that u v maybe like this u v open set. That's that's the bubble wrap property. Open sets. What do they do? Uh, they create a neighborhood around each point, defending it against uh, anything that's not part of of the neighborhood, not part of uh, not not a member of A. You understand? So this is how disconnectedness is defined. As long as you can produce two disjoint non-empty open sets, disjoint means there, there is no intersection, that like in this picture, and um, yes, yeah, so as long as you can cover M in those two disjoint open sets, you know your space is not connected. Right? So definition. M is not connected. And you can say disconnected, but let's say not connected if there exists a disconnection UV. And I, I, I don't want to repeat the explanation. What, the, what is a disconnection? It's a pair of open disjoint sets. They are, each of them contains a piece of M. And, um, and they, they, they entirely cover M. Okay? If you had more pieces, you can include uh, a bunch of the pieces in one bubble wrap and, and the remaining in the other. Doesn't matter that. You see, just like I did here, U contains two connected pieces. Whereas V contains one connected piece. So the connected pieces are going to be known as components. We talk about that. The components are the, the connected uh, segments, the connected pieces of the earth. Okay? So how would we say that a set is connected? That's if it's impossible to, uh, to cover it in this bubble wrap as in here. You see, if you were to try to cover bubble wrap A and then bubble wrap B, the bubble wraps will intersect. Because, because I, cannot, uh, I cannot put an open neighborhood into the crack. There is no room. Right? So, the second definition is that M is connected. if M isn't disconnected. Seems trivial, but you see, we know what disconnected means, so we know now that not disconnected means that no separation, no disconnection is possible. You somehow have to prove that no matter how hard you try, you will never succeed in disconnecting the set. All right, so let's try to see how that might work in practice. So let's try to, uh, to have an example and see whether this set is connected or not. Example, so if I take any interval A, B, which is a subset of R, is Connected. Now let's try to explain why that will be connected. Okay, so the interval here is A, here is B. We're claiming it's it's a connected uh, segment, like the earth that that it's like a solid wire that I that if I pick it by B, it will not uh, fall into pieces. How do I know? Well. Suppose not, or suppose not. So if it's not disconnected, uh, then the interval AB is contained in U union V. You agree? So what is U and V? Those are the bubble wraps. So I somehow would be able to pack part of uh, the interval in U, part of the 
uh, interval in V, uh, and then I'll just list the properties. Again, I mean, it's really redundant. I want you to be, just when I say this connection, you know that I mean this, where the first property is that I know that, uh, that U and V open subsets of R. Let's say open subsets of R, okay? Uh, then, two, uh, we know that U intersection V is the empty set, and three, in other words, they are they have no nothing in common, like in this picture. Whatever is in V cannot possibly be in U. Third condition is that uh, uh, the intersection uh, of U and A B is not empty. Equally, the intersection of V with A B isn't empty. Good. So. Then, if we have those uh, those conditions without loss of generality, well, the point A has to be either in U or in V, right? So we would say without loss of generality, A is in U. So you write it like this. So you, you understand why it's no loss of generality. It's in one of them, label U to be the one containing A. This is just a label. If, 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 if the bags, if the bubble wrap labeled U is not containing A, just replace the labels. That's it. So it's very, you're moving, just replace the labels so you know where A is. So what we do now? So now U is open, right? U is an open. What is open? It means that every point, in particular the point A, is contained inside of an interval. Do you agree? Open sets, each point is protected by at least one whole open interval. It's R, right? So what we do is, uh, I'll try to illustrate that in this picture. So, so if A is in U, then I can take this and I can then go out and there is going to be a ball of radius epsilon centered at A, uh, which is part of U. Right? It might not be as big as I drew, but maybe a microscopic open interval for sure must exist, since U is open. Okay? So what we're going to do is, so in particular, look at this. Uh, in this bubble wrap, in this U, not only A, but quite a lot of friends of A, all the way to this epsilon, they're all part of U. You agree? So... So uh, what we can do is that implies that the interval A to A plus epsilon, you agree? A plus epsilon is, is part of U. So I'm just trying to track what, how big is the piece of the, of the interval that is contained in U. Okay? So we have this. Oh. But look at it, right? So uh, this edge, it's located somewhere, right? So I look at A plus epsilon. Where is A plus epsilon located? A plus epsilon, epsilon here is small, right? Uh, uh, well, let's say, let's say epsilon is as big as, uh, as A minus B, sorry, B minus A, right? Because if B minus A means if, if, if epsilon is equal to B minus A, then we reach all the way to, uh, to B. So what we do then is we, we define the following, uh, the, fo the following collection. So we, we, we say, let, let S, or let's say, let's call it the set capital A. It would be maybe uh, make more sense. So let the uh, set capital A be equal to uh, the point C belonging to the interval AB, such that the full interval A through C, including C, is part of U. You understand what I'm, try what I'm doing here? I'm basically trying to see how far, can I, uh, how far can I go down the interval and still be inside of the bubble wrap U. You see that I clearly can go somewhat far, right? I do not know that, uh, that from A to this point uh, the, the piece is whole, but, but we packed this interval, we've broken, we packed it into two different uh, open uh, uh, open bubble wraps. Okay.
Okay, so then I want to see where uh, I find the, the, the shards of this interval in which bubble run. So I take the C and I, and I want to know uh, where is the C. So where this full interval. So clearly the set, uh, clearly the set, uh, the set A contains, uh, contains, so clearly C is bigger than A, you agree? Clearly, C is strictly bigger than A. Because I can take, clearly, in this interval, I can go all the way to epsilon. So therefore, the closed interval A to closed interval A plus epsilon over 2 is part of U. I can make it a closed bar. I just, just eliminate this last point, just take any point slightly below. And therefore, you know that C is definitely bigger than A. OK, so, so uh, and, and what is? And A, look at it. A is bounded. You agree? I go through the interval. Okay, which parts are in U? It's bounded uh, by the point B. Because uh, you know, if, I, if I reach B, then uh, there is no other point to consider. OK? And A is bounded above uh, by B. You see this, right? So because uh, you see, I go all the way where the full uh, piece is in U. How far can I reach? So we can take the supremum. Let S equal to the supremum of A. So uh, then S is strictly bigger than A, but less than or equal to B, because B is an upper bound. So it's strictly less than or equal to B. And that's the supremum. So here is the, the, here is the main idea. If, if S is not equal to, if S isn't equal to B, if it isn't equal to B, then uh, what can I do? Let's say, let's say here is my point S. Let's say I reach over here. I expand as far as I can go. And here is my point S beyond which I cannot go. If S isn't equal to B, uh, what can I do? I can take, I can take, uh, if S isn't equal to B, then we have two possibilities. Either S, it belongs to U, or it doesn't, right? So let's see what happens, uh, what happens next. If S doesn't equal to B, S belongs uh, S belongs to U, or S, I, I should say, it's, it's, it's without, before we go there, so this S, it belongs to U, or S belongs to B. Uh, clearly, so, so, then we, so that's we know, right? So then we say that if uh, S isn't equal to B, if it's not equal to B, S belonging to uh, uh, to U implies implies what? So if S belongs to U, it implies that uh, that there exists uh, some some ball of radius delta. So uh, so we have this here is an S. This is S minus delta, and this is S plus delta, uh, which is inside of U. This guy is inside of U. You agree? Because if S belongs to U. It's a protective set. It can create a neighborhood around S. So what happens if S doesn't belong? If S belongs to U, then I can just you see here is this S. I can just create this uh, small uh, interval. And notice, right? The full blue region is inside of U, plus the red region is inside of U. So it's not true that this is the supremum. I could have gone f uh, farther, right? Uh, which means. Which means what? So the, 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 mathematically, this implies uh, that supremum of A uh, is bigger or equal to, let's say, S plus delta over 2, which is bigger than S. That's a contradiction, because the supremum is equal to S. You see, supremum cannot be bigger than S, so that's a contradiction. On the other hand, can you see what will happen if if I um, uh, if S is uh, in V? 
if S belongs to V, then again, I will have some ball. I, I'm not changing the label. I hope it doesn't confuse you. So this is S minus delta, S plus delta. This guy is inside of V. But then, but then, uh, but then, uh, 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 supremum of A uh, would be uh, supremum of A would be less than or equal to. S minus delta. Because you see, I cannot quite reach to S, uh, less than or equal to S minus delta, which is clearly less than S. Again, a contradiction. Okay? What, what, do we, what, follows, what follows from what I just said is that S equals to B, which means that the full interval AB must be packed in only one of the bubble wraps. It's only packed in the set U. So um, what that implies one moment that U V is not a disconnection. Yes? Is this just a fancy way of saying that um, you can't make a closed set the union of two disjoint open sets? Oh, you can. I mean, careful. Uh, in what space? In, 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 a, in a discrete space, sure. Any closed set is open. So any closed is also open, and you can make and you can make a closed set uh, the union of two. If it's if it's it has more than one point, you can make it the union of two disjoint open sets. So, in what space are you talking about? In R. In R, and be careful. Uh, a, a close uh, a close union of two disjoint open. Uh, you have to be careful. Okay. Yes. Is that is this all because like no open set of A is common? No open subset of R can contain its supremum. Uh, yeah, it, it, it relates to that. Sure, you, you might think this way. But be, be careful that again you you you, you say something. Sounds completely correct. Just make sure that when you run down this argument, you see what happens, right? So the point here is this interval is, is not quite, it's not, it's closed, it's not open. You agree? It's not open. It's closed, not open. Uh, when we, we cover it in bubble wrap, uh, something similar to just what we mentioned, you mean in some sense uh, the, op the open sets that, that uh, are we are trying to break A, B by, they don't contain their supremum, but again, I, I, would, I advise you to be extra cautious. For example, if I take the interval in Q, I'm going to take more examples in a moment, right? You'll see what happens if I take this interval in Q. Will the argument go through or it fails? All right, so may I raise? I want to keep this part on the board just for inspiration. You understand this argument? Again, I, I would like to remind you that the second exam is due this Wednesday, our last day of class. The final is on the 19th. I will try to arrange some, some review. But again, right, so, so hopefully, again, I, I let you lose this semester. Sorry for that. I hope you learned something. I'm not sure. But I hope. Okay. Hope dies last. I was hoping you said, sure, we learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we learned so very much, right? Don't worry. Okay. We learned too much. Your brain couldn't hold it all. Are you joking me? <laughs> She's kidding me, so you see. I'm confused. Cannot hold it. You're not even taking analysis to it, but it bothers me. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so another example. Uh, how about, uh, let's look at R. Is R connected? Is it connected? 
What do you think? Woo! Yes? No? Yes. R is connected. Uh, now why? Why is it connected? We saw we saw that the closed interval is connected. What will be still true with uh, with R? What we can do is we can uh, proceed in a similar way. I'm just gonna I'm gonna draw. I don't want to explain too much. So uh, here is R. Suppose I try to uh, to pack it into bubble wrap, separate disjoint bubble wraps. So what I do is, uh, if we can do this, if R equals to U union V, I'm not, uh, so, so we are U intersection V is empty, and R intersection U is not empty, so assuming that R inter intersected with the open set U isn't empty, I will show that V, the other bubble wrap, must contain nothing at all. That's the idea, okay? So of course we, we are assuming uh, U V open in R. Okay? So suppose I try to cover them by open subsets of R to try to disconnect it. Uh, now, uh, I say, so that I don't go by a proof by contradiction, I just go. I, I say this is this this is a disconnection candidate, because you see that uh, well they are they are open sets, they are disjoint, and R intersected with one of them isn't empty. So my my goal is to show that V must be empty because that means uh, that everything in fact is contained in U. Okay, how do I do this? Well, I take a point, take a point A. Pick a point A, and then see how far I can go. How far can I go uh, in this direction, and how far can I go in the other direction, and stay in U, you understand? So I'm trying to see how big is that piece of space contained in U. Okay, and now I'm, I'm just gonna try to try to do this, you know, French mind thing, right? Pantomime, right? So here, here I am. So here I stand at A, and I imagine I am this uh, cleaning person. And what am I doing? I am I am uh, washing the interval inside of you, and trying to see how far will I need to go until I, I get stuck to the bubble wrap. So let's look at one direction, okay? I'm gonna wave my hands and you're gonna try to understand me. I move in this direction, away from, so A is part of you, you understand? A, is an element of you, because it, it, our intersection U isn't empty, okay? So then, I'm gonna try to show that the full interval from A to infinity and from A to minus infinity is inside of U. And how do I do that? Well, I start at A, U is a protective set, so definitely I can inch a little bit forward, you agree? There would be an interval inside of U protecting the point A, so I can inch a little bit forward. Now I reach this edge. Could I reach farther yes. than this edge? Yes. Why? Now, if I could not, so this point that that I, that, uh, that was is the is the point where I start. That's where I'm standing. Either this point is part of you, in which case if it's part of you, then uh, uh, this point is protected by an interval that part of it extends backwards, part of it extends forwards. I use the forward part and I move on. If the set is not part of you but part of V, V is open, right? So it means I couldn't have approached it. The bubble wrap would have stopped me before I reached this point because this full point would have been protected in V. So I would get stuck by the bubble wrap before I get to that point, okay? So I get to some point, can I go on? Yes, I can go on. I get to another point, can I go on? Yes, I can go on and on and on. Do you see that? There is no point of stopping 
Of course, maybe if you are clever, you might ask, oh, you move a little bit more, but each time there is less to move. You move a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So the intervals get smaller, but uh, how do you know you can, uh, that there is no supremum, that you just cannot move farther and farther and farther? How do you know that, right? If you just move by intervals, just one point, another point, well, you can argue by supremum, right? Say, let's say, let's think, just like in the argument before, the farthest point you can you, you could have reached, okay? If there is this, this picture, you know, right, I cannot quite reach the, the chair, I'm kind of trying to go on. I always have a little more to go, but not quite enough to go to the wall, like Zeno's paradox. Like, my suffering at 5 a.m., my study going nowhere, that's, my, that's pretty much, what, I, what, what my research is involved in, right? I can show you pictures. There's a terrible, horrible picture I just uh, found. <laughs> you, if you're not horrified, that's just because you haven't reached that stage. So what happens is, is what you do, you take the supremum, and then uh, you, you, you look at the supremum. That's the farthest you can go. Well, the supremum is either part of V, of the opposite side, in which case you could have reached it, or it is not, in which could, in case you could have actually reached beyond it. So there is no farthest place you can go. That means you can go on forever. In you. How do you go in the other direction? Similar, right? Same idea, but what do you use? It's a supremum, you use infimum. And supremum and infimum, you can use them in arbitrary metric spaces, yes? Incorrect, terrible. Supremum and infimum only works in R or in other spaces where you have an order, the relation defined of them, and what else do you need to have? You need to have the least upper bound property. So you need an order relation, and you need the least upper bound property. Do you understand that? One thing that you probably haven't done enough is you have solved homework. Make sure you look through the solved homework. Just try them yourselves and then see my answers. Good? So huge mistake, right? Uh, metric spaces in general spaces, they are, they don't have bigger points, smaller points. That makes no sense. Okay. I, I explained this. Oh, yes. Why are you saying it makes no sense? Because when you take supremum, you're saying the biggest. Uh, you you really say, fancily, you say maximum. Supremum is uh, is the ideal maximum. It's like your unachieved potential. If it's not maximum, it's, it's your potential that you can strive to achieve but never quite get there. But get closer and closer to it, right? So your your ideal level of intelligence is somewhere here. Probably you can never, whatever that even means, but you can never reach it because what happens is like first you go fast and then you go less fast and less fast and it's your asymptote. And if you look, look at it in one dimension, you are climbing up to it, but not quite getting the maximum. So supremum is a generalized maximum. For that, you must have order. Something must be smaller than something else. Any, any two points should be comparable in size, right? You know how to do it on a number line, but how do you do it in a, an abstract space, okay? Even if you define order, that order might not have this, the least upper bound property. We saw examples of that. So Rudin deals a little bit more with it. Okay, good. So next example is discrete space. And you are gonna help me with the discrete space. So M discrete. Contain, uh, containing more than one point. More than one point is what? Discrete spaces. If it's more than one point in a discrete space, is it possibly a connected space? Why not? So if you contain more than one point, the space M is disconnected. Yes? Do you see why? Why is it disconnected? Well, uh, take Take x, oh, so, so uh, take 
A belonging to M. Let's say A. It's just, it, it, there is another point not equal to it, right? So what we can do is we can say uh, we can say that the set U will simply be the ball of radius one around A, which then equals to that point A. You agree? Discrete spaces uh, tell you that well. If it's not topologically, but uh, metric discrete space tells you uh, anything that is less than a one unit away from you is actually the, the only one point, right? You cannot be uh, less than one unit away from anyone. So this uh, space is U. Uh, it's open. And uh, uh, we can take V to be the set M minus uh, the point A. It's not empty, it contains at least one more point, right? That's not empty. Also, and then you have that U union V has to be the full space because U contains one point and V contains all the rest. And they are disjoint. The trivial, okay? I don't want to write more, you understand this connection. So U, V, Open sets, they are disjoint, they are not empty, we disconnect to the discrete space. Next, uh, let's ask what about the counter set? How badly is the counter set disconnected? If, if, it's not, if it's at all disconnected. What do you think? Is the counter set disconnected? It does. Yes, you, you take a line, it's very intuitive. You break out the middle thirds, so you now have two pieces. Now you take each of them and you break the middle thirds in, in them, you have more pieces. So you're just crushing it and crushing it and crushing it. So the counter set is very disconnected. Very means that the biggest connected part of it is a point. That's, that's what we're very means, okay? So, so sometimes if you have two intervals, right? So each interval is connected, so you can see that uh, it has two components. It has two connected pieces. Uh, but, but very disconnected means that it's crushed uh, to, the, to the atomic level. It's crushed to just having powder, dust. Can you just say that the minimum, the minimum distance between any point in Q and any point in B has to be greater than epsilon or any epsilon bigger than zero? Uh, so uh, first, when you, when you mention delta epsilon, you are, you are using some metric. So what did you say about U and B again? So if you take any point in U and any point in B, the interim distance between uh, you, between those two points, that's, it's going to be greater than epsilon for epsilon. Well, if you take that, you don't, you see, so yeah, I see what you're trying to say, but, you, but what you're saying is if you take one point in U and one point in V, they are different points. So the distance between them is already positive. So there is no need to take infimum. What you mean is I try to uh, to look at points closest to U and points closest to V. I mean, that's maybe what you mean. And, in, and if that's what you mean, the infimum might be zero. You have to be careful. Okay, so here is an example. Example, by the way, I, I check uh, if you watch uh, the videos that I recommended and you do not. Right, I didn't see connectness or compactness open. So, example. So uh, let's take the counter set. Set uh, is very disconnected. And you understood what I mean by very. So how do I know? Well, let's just show that it's disconnected. How do we show that it's disconnected? Well. Uh, let's let's let, let's look at one segment of the counter set. So that's from zero to one third, and then the next part is from two thirds to one. And I'm just drawing a picture. I, I don't want to write much, so I'm just going to say, well, take uh, this point here. Some some average. Uh, take take the average between one third and two thirds, and uh, take this as your bubble wrap. You can take this to all the way to, uh, to minus infinity, and then you know take this as your uh, bubble wrap. So that's your U, that's your V to open sets that disconnect the interval. Great? 
And while very disconnected, in fact, uh, between any, here's what you can show, between any two points of the counter set, you can uh, find a point not in the counter set and use that point to create uh, disjoint intervals, okay? When you study components, you can show similarly that, uh, again, intervals are the connected components. In R, there is nothing else. Uh, in R, if it's not an interval, it's not connected. So, and if it's an interval, it is connected. We're going to prove it, uh, at, at least to, uh, I'm going to mention it as a theorem. So, uh, so in the counter set, you will see that, uh, that the intervals are, are, the connected components of the counter set are just singleton points. Because again, this, this was a component, you broke it, smaller component, so you see, you see what I'm saying, right? Uh, it's just dust. So another example. What about Q? How badly is Q disconnected? So if I view it as a, uh, so I take Q, uh, subset of R, how badly is this disconnected? Huh? Terribly. Why is it terribly disconnected? You can imagine that, uh, that what you do is you, you have this explosion, like a meteorite explosion, and you have all those irrational numbers function, cutting this line everywhere. They are dense, right? So they will shred the, the, the solid interval into singleton pieces. It's as disconnected as the counter set. I hope you see it, and if needed, you can make, you can supply the right proof. very disconnected uh, because what you can do is uh, I'll just show it's disconnected so we can say that minus infinity to root of 2 union root of 2 to infinity covers Q and you, you, I don't need to say those are open uh, sets so that's U and V they are disjoint open right so it's a disconnection. Good? So there is this there is this uh, unpleasant notion that we need to dispense with. Uh, connectedness might be relative, right? So when you say uh, something is an open set, that depends on the particular metric and that it depends on the particular subset, okay? So, um, remark? Remark, uh, so open set Close set is a notion determined by subspaces, uh, uh, determined by, uh, I should say, metric and relative topology. And what I mean by relative topology is uh, is this. So, so if I have if I have the interval zero to one, this is, this is not open in uh, in R. You agree it's not open in R, uh, but open relative to the, to the subspace 0, 2. You agree? So what, what I mean is uh, if this is my space, uh, then uh, I don't really need protection to the left of 0. Right? So, so what, is, what is a relative topology? It's like... Uh, you had this metric space. It's like if you take R, you had this uh, this universe, and then a nuclear disaster happened, 
and part of the universe is obliterated. So in this case, imagine that we had this full real number universe, and we blew up everything but uh, the closed interval 0 to 2, okay? So the open sets now are the ghosts of the open sets of R. Do you understand what I mean by that? So, so for example, if I were to draw, if I were to draw the interval zero to two, so what I have is, let's say, let's draw the, the interval closed to zero, uh, zero to open one. So somewhere here is one. So this part survived, and this part did not, right? So this is so, so the ball uh, relative to zero two. I should say it's like this. So the ball in the space uh, zero two. of radius 1 around 0 is simply the same thing as as the interval 0 2 intersected with the ball relative to r of radius 1 and 0 you see what i'm saying so the open sets are are, are pretty much the parts of the open sets of r that uh, survived uh, this Contraction of the universe, removal of points of the universe, right? So there you had this full interval protecting zero, and now because everything to the left of zero was obliterated, this part is a ghost. It's just uh, the the open in, the open ball at zero is just the half open uh, ball, zero to one. Do you understand? So uh, so that what that's what makes it so so here. This was not a protective set uh, in R, but it became a protective set relative to 0, 2. So we have that open sets and closed sets are relative, correct? Relative to the, uh, to the particular subspace. Now, we defined connectedness in terms of uh, open sets. So you see, you might run this technical risk that now connect something might be connected in one space and not connected uh, in another space because the, the open balls, they are, or the open sets are now different somehow. So that's one thing we need to investigate if that can happen. You understand what I'm talking about? So, uh, here, is, uh, here is the theorem that, uh, that I'm going to prove. Connectedness is not relative. So you can say something is connected or it's not. You see, so you, you, you see it would be weird. You, you would say that this part is not connected in, uh, in the two-dimensional space, uh, but is somehow connected in, uh, in a smaller space, you don't want it. Seems weird, right? It's two pieces, it shouldn't be two pieces. Theorem connectedness isn't relative. And this part is actually even uh, at adv uh, advanced, uh, people that are very advanced in mathematics sometimes miss this uh, part. Right? Because they usually you, you read um, you read some fancy book and uh, it's it's very it's defined precisely relative to the space, so then you you might think that you you're not flexible. Connectedness isn't relative. And why do I what do I mean by that? So uh, if uh, if the space A that's what, what should I call it? Uh, um, if the space K is disconnected 
if the space K is disconnected uh, in M, where I mean that K is a subset of M, then K is, discon then K is disconnected, uh, uh, I should say that this K is disconnected in M if and only if it's disconnected in itself. What I'm trying to say is, uh, let's try to, uh, to illustrate it by a picture. So suppose that this is my picture for, this is by the way in metric spaces. So this is my picture for K. So it's just a torn piece of paper. So that's my K. Okay. The ambient space M in which it's contained is, uh, is, let's say, the three-dimensional space, okay? So this piece of paper that I, that I tore in so many pieces, maybe two, maybe more, but it's suspended inside of F, right? So uh, you can see that it's disconnected relative to the three-dimensional space because I can imagine that taking uh, a bubble wrap around this piece, a bubble wrap around this piece, a, a three-dimensional bubble wrap. Right? The existence of a three-dimensional bubble wrap will imply the existence of the corresponding bubble wrap inside of K. So it's a bit delicate. I, I hopefully, uh, hopefully I will not get stuck in explaining. It's an easy idea, but you know. So, so uh, let's go one direction. Assume. Assume uh, K is disconnected uh, relative to M. Okay? Assume it's disconnected relative to M. So what does it imply? It implies that uh, K is contained in U union V. where u intersection k not empty, u uh, v intersection k not empty, and and uh, uh, and uh, what uh, u v open in M. So there are these connections in M. Okay? So uh, what, what, what would be then the corresponding disconnection relative to K? Then I can say the set A, which equals to K intersection U, and B, which equal to K intersection V, are open is joined non empty subsets of K Sub subset of K and we have that K is written to as A union B which implies that K is disconnected relative to itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's verify. So, my point is you don't need a bigger, um, you don't need a space a bigger space uh, uh, containing those pieces to know that something is disconnected. You, you, let's, let's, say, let's say that the well, first direction is suppose we, we know that this piece of paper is inside of uh, R3. It's a two-dimensional space suspended inside of uh, R3. And in R3 I, I take three-dimensional bubble wrap. The open uh, sets uh, in R3 contain, they're all containing a bunch of open balls. 
open balls, like it's like a, a rubber ball, right? Maybe a tennis ball or smaller, but basically a field-in ball. That's what uh, the balls in R3 look like, right? So using that type of bubble wrap, I'm able to show this connection. So that's U and V. So U is a, is a bunch of balls containing this piece. V is a bunch of balls containing this piece. Now those balls, what I can imagine is now I can imagine eliminating R3. I eradicate everything in the universe but the two pieces of paper, okay? So those open balls, that, uh, that used to exist in R3, now only have their shadow. They have their, their uh, two-dimensional disks that are uh, covering the space. And those two-dimensional disks, they're, they're part of their union to A, the other part unions to B, they form the disconnection of K relative to itself. Do you understand? Because the other, that's the trivial direction. The other direction is where you need to do some work. So a disconnection in a bigger space induces a disconnection within the space. Why? Because I have a bunch, this is covered by, I don't want to draw it here, uh, a bunch of open balls cover this segment. The open balls covering this segment don't intersect with any of the open balls that cover the other segment. Okay. Now what I do is when I take this intersection with k, I eliminate uh, my universe, say, from k. So the, those open balls, what do they leave? They leave shadows. They leave, uh, in this place there will be a full disk, in this place there will be a part disk. Just like it was part interval. Disk because it's two dimensional, yes? So instead of having a full ball, you only have like a shadow of it because you cut away uh, everything above this piece of paper and everything below you slice out of the space. Yes, you follow? What about on the boundary of K? What about it? So on the boundary of K here, you have a no, ball on the boundary of K, side. you just have a, a shred of an open ball. But on the other side, you, like if it's a closed interval? So this is, you see, it could be very rugged, but take any point on the boundary, take, uh, take there, there was a, a big, uh, well, there was a three-dimensional open ball containing the segment not intersecting with uh, any of the open balls containing the other piece. Now, when you remove everything but K, what you have is part of a disk. So let's say here was the intersection, it would be part of the disk, let's say this part. And then whatever else part of the disk was removed, it was eliminated. So the open, basically, what is the relative topology of this piece of paper? Uh, it's, it's in R2, so they are uh, sometimes the full open disks, sometimes in this case half disks, right? And sometimes something very ugly, like, uh, like a chunk of a disk. They are going to be disks where you remove stuff from the disk. Those are going to be the open set. Just like in one dimensional, here you had just uh, half open intervals. When you, when, you get, uh, when you have more dimensions, the shape of the open balls becomes complicated. But you can imagine roughly that it's generated by the open balls from, from R3. Right? So that was the easy direction. Now, uh, so disconnectedness in an ambient space implies disconnectedness within the space. Now we want to show that disconnectedness within the space implies disconnectedness to the bigger space. Uh, so assume assume uh, K is disconnected relative to itself. Assume that happens, k is connected relative to itself. So what does it mean? It means that it means that uh, k equals to a union b. Just like kind of like before, we just don't know that there is a, 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 a union B, where uh, where A B is joined 
non-empty subsets or, or, or open subsets of K. So now I'll try to illustrate uh, uh, what, what happens. I, I have a point, I'm going to draw maybe not the best point, right? not, not the, the, most, the hardest point here, is a point in K. So I have, uh, I have a disk around this point. Or if it's at the boundary, it would be some, some ripped disk. So some, if it, when the paper was connected, I draw a disk, and then I tear it, and whatever remains from the disk is that open neighborhood. Correct. So here is a disk, uh, and uh, and here is another point, right? So so th this point is contained in some disk, and then we have uh, here is another point. Uh, this is a disk of radius delta, whereas this is a disk of radius uh, epsilon, which depends. I should say maybe delta sub y because this point is y. And uh, here we have the point is x, and there will be epsilon sub x. So that's x. It's smudged, but uh, I'm going to write it again. Here. So, so what am I going to do? I'm now going to try to create an open neighborhood uh, that doesn't intersect the open neighborhoods in here. So I'm going to try to make it three-dimensional. I'm going to try to do something like this. Yes? And like this. You understand? I'm going to try to make the, the, the disks or part of disks into, into three-dimensional balls that are still disjoint. OK? So. What we do is uh, we can say that A, it's an open set. It's equal to, to the union over all the x belonging to A of ball radius epsilon sub x of x. This ball is a, a ball in K, right? And B, so you see A is a union of uh, whatever, whatever blue things I drew here. B is some union of whatever red things I drew there. OK, that's how it's open. So what I want to do is I want to keep those sets uh, disjoint, and I want to replace k by m. That's what I do here. I want to inject, uh, I want to create, I want to make those balls three-dimensional in this picture. OK, how am I going to do it so they don't intersect? You see, the picture might be misleading. Maybe here they don't intersect, but and this is also abstract space, right? But when I make it 3D, maybe they will intersect like this region, and this region will cross. When I inflate them, maybe the bubbles, as they inflate, they kind of uh, touch each other or cross into each other. You might see, you look at this picture, say, no, no way that can happen, but uh, you are just viewing a particular picture. How do you know it never happens? Okay. So what do we do here? So we are gonna we are gonna say that. Uh, we're going to we're going to replace those balls. So so replace ball of radius epsilon sub x k x by ball radius epsilon sub x divided by two. I, I make it smaller, and now I make it m. Okay, I made the radius smaller, and then I made it three dimensional or whatever, uh, and and you do the same thing. Ball of radius uh, delta y in k around y by the ball of delta sub y over 2 m around y. What does this achieve? So now uh, I'm going to let so u, the set u, uh, will be uh, the union of all the points x belonging to A of ball radius uh, epsilon sub x over 2 x m. And v 
is the corresponding pole, is the corresponding union. So now the, there, are all, there are unions of open balls. So this is, uh, the first is open in M. I made it open in M. Uh, the other set V is going to be the union of all the Y in B. The ball of radius delta Y over 2 around Y in M also open in M. Clearly, since I take the union over all the points in A and A and B, the union is, so clearly, um, I can say that K is contained in U union V. You agree? I only added points, right? So each point was already in the center. When I made the intervals, so when I made the radii smaller, each uh, point in K is in fact the center of some open ball. So it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm, if I just even the union the centers, I would have the full set K. So those sets are open. Now the only problem is to show they are disjoint. They are open. They, they, are bubble, they, they, they already work like bubble wrap because they cover K. The only question, are they disjoint? Because if they are not disjoint, then it's not a separation. And here we have to be careful. So finally, U intersection V is the empty set. If not, we have that Z belongs to U intersection V. Some point is, is inside of them. Now, what does it mean? If Z is there, in particular, Z must belong to one of the balls uh, that make out U, and it must belong to one of the balls that make out V. So that implies Z belongs to some ball of radius epsilon x over 2 around x. Intersection ball uh, delta y over 2 around y. Yes? So then let me try to measure the distance between uh, x and y. Do you agree that, uh, uh, so, so do you agree that the open ball around x does not contain y? And the open ball around y does not contain x. So I know that the, uh, so I can say this, that the distance between x and y is bigger than or equal to the minimum of epsilon sub x delta sub y. In fact, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's strictly bigger than, but I'll say less than or equal is good enough for me. Do you see that? Why minimum? Because Look into the two dimension of flat structure here, right? Uh, so a, any point, a, a, it basically, n y is not inside of this disk, so the distance is bigger than epsilon x, and, uh, and x is not here, so the distance between x and y is bigger than delta y. So in particular, it's uh, bigger than, in fact, not the minimum, I should even say the maximum. Why minimum? Say maximum. Maximum. Agreed? It's bigger than the maximum because uh, y is not here, so distance to x, uh, from x to y is at least uh, epsilon y, epsilon x, I'm sorry, and it's at least uh, delta y. Yes? Now let's use triangle inequality. Uh, we, we use the point z, so this is then less than or equal to distance x to z plus distance uh, z to y. But if, if z belongs to this ball, this distance is smaller than epsilon x over 2, and this distance is smaller than delta y over 2. So this is smaller than epsilon x over 2 plus delta y over 2. Yes? Which is smaller 
and then uh, and then uh, maximum smaller than twice maximum epsilon x over two delta y over two. Do you agree? Smaller than because what I'm saying is uh, trying to avoid conditions, right? Let's say with our loss of generality that uh, that uh, epsilon sub x is the biggest. Okay. So um, uh, so in fact uh, uh, smaller uh, yes yes so so yeah so if epsilon sub x is biggest I can replace this by epsilon sub x over two and together they sum up to uh, to epsilon sub x over two plus epsilon sub x over two now what is this this is if I take the two and I move it in that's the same as maximum uh, epsilon sub x delta sub y. So what we have established here is that the maximum of those two numbers is smaller than the maximum of those two numbers. That's impossible. You see, you see what I'm saying? So you have to be really careful. In my notes, there might be a small mistake regarding this uh, inequality. Uh, you know, I think I said uh, that the distance must be smaller than the sum, and that's not true. You can take a metric where uh, that might not be the case, but it, but to the maximum, if you are careful here, just to look here, uh, this follows. Good. Right? Do you understand what I just showed? So the, so it, it, you can take the contrapositive. So it's it disconnected relative to itself, if and only if it's disconnected in the, in the ambient uh, space. So it's connected relative to itself if and only if it's connected in the ambient space. That gives you freedom. Do you want to bubble wrap it using the bigger space or do you want to bubble wrap it relative to itself? Usually I prefer bubble wrapping it in a bigger space, but it's not always, uh, you know, not, might not always be the, the best strategy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so,